Good morning, class. Good morning, Sonia. My name is Martin Sonia. And um, I want to make a confession to all of you here. Look, this is my first time lecturing in this school, so you will have to pardon me, okay? Obviously. Excuse me. Talk waiting you want talk, we they hear you. Um, I, I will be, I'll be lecturing, I, I'm, I'm a lecturer in Botany. And Mr. Lecturer, we no get time. Talk waiting you want talk, make you get out. Oh. Wait. I, sh I should get out. Oh, sorry. Probably the way I said it, you don't like it. I mean, walk away. Come out! Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Wait, what is your name? None of your business. Young man, if you are going to stay in this class, you will stand to address me. The only exception I will give is if you are sick or if you are pregnant. But when I look at you, I see a sick, pregnant fool. Silence! Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, sure, I will. So get out. You have messed with the wrong man. Ah, the only mess I see is a wrong man talking. Now get out. No blood! No blood! No blood! No blood! No blood! No blood! Wait. Where, where did you get that? What did you just say? You are dealing with the wrong man. On the contrary, you have no idea who you are dealing with. Have you ever been to the third dimension? Have you ever called down fire on the first in rank? Hold up the secrets here. No, you've not. You're only a little boy babbling. As an elder who has called down fire in the third dimension, I am ordering you right now. Stand up! My name is Damnola Mike Bamiloye. Um, I'm a drama minister, um, a gospel filmmaker, and also the producer and the director of the movie or the season film Abattoir. You are welcome. To beyond entertainment show with PVO. That's the toys. toys behind the, the movies. movies. This is beyond entertainment. And this is beyond entertainment. Abertura season two um, ended after Martins came back from the prison. You know, he got back from the prison. You know, he was welcomed by his family, by Black Bay Row. And so, um, about, us, about two hours season three is basically the aftermath of what happened. You know, the now Martins is settled, is 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 rested, is is um is stronger in Christ, you know, is more rooted and he has a solid relationship with Baba Bero. So it's a wonderful um exposition into the life of Martins and Baba Benro and Mama Benro and Daddy, you know, we have some open end and uh, uh, that in season two. Now, now we have um, Badi, who, whose daughter was killed by Sonia, and so the things that happened afterwards, you know, so many things happened in season three. Also, we have new appearances. We have um, um, the registrar, we have Rambo, we have um, the courtist. So, yeah, so we have so many things happening in season, season three. You know, so it's like a new season entirely with new faces new story, but at the same time, with a connection to season two and season one. Martins, Dele is kidnapped. 
His father told me. Ah. No, no, no. This is bad news. Yes, it is. But we will find him. Now, now I'm scared. Why? That means no one is really safe. That Dele is a child of God. So explain to me, how can a child of God be kidnapped? Martins, take it easy. I can't take it easy. I hear about the kidnappings and deaths in this school. I have never thought that someone so close to us can be caught in that mess. Martins, when God allows a child of God to pass through a mess, it is to bring out a message. I hear the message loud and clear. Uh, can you share it with me? Well, there's nothing to share. We all have to watch our backs because no one is safe. No one. Martins, what is wrong with you? Dele is wrong with me. I didn't know that boy was coming to this school. Now imagine my shock to hear that that boy is... Dele is kidnapped. He will come back home. I'm sure of that. What makes you say that? Because all things, good or bad, work together for the good of those that love God and those who are the called according to his purpose. But the thing... We, we, we will talk later. <sighs> Martins. I think I've been watched. I've been watched. We, we will talk later. We can never tell. We can never tell. Season 4, we don't know what it brings. And I'm looking forward to season 4. That's the thing about this place. You don't know what each season entails. You don't know what is in each season. We, when season 1 was written, we didn't know what was going to be season 2. When season 2 was written, we didn't know what was going to be in season 3. So with season 3 now, I have, to, I, have, I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen in season 4. You know, but one of the things that intrigues me in season three was I think it was it episode one and episode two, um, talking about Flora and her encounter with the Holy Spirit, and how she encountered the Holy Spirit, and uh, she was before the encounter with the Holy Spirit, it, 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 her life was still she was still trying to get the balance. You know, she was still the the, the old Flora, uh, Flora was still so much in control. She was fighting people. She was you know, she was abusing in the name of God. He said, how can you talk to my sister? She's just like that. You know, she, was, she was still the old Flora. You know, but after the encounter with the Holy Spirit, she became someone transformed. I remember you. Are you okay? Why are you crying? Flora is dead. What? <laughs> my sister is dead. It is not possible. The lady standing right here is a different person. A black and osha, like an ocean, a macada bagado shakata, Rena macado sharing it, a macado shakata. The Holy Spirit lives in me. Jesus. Yes, One of the things that the Holy Spirit led us to do while on set was to pray. You know, and that's. That prayer was a wonderful one, it was an amazing one, it was a powerful one. So what happened was that we, the cast and the crew, we all came together and we told, our, we told ourselves, said, look, it's not enough to act the character of somebody who the Holy Spirit, take the, who, who, who has been baptized by the Holy Spirit. We can't act it. If you're going to make effect, if, if it's going to be effective, then it shouldn't be acted. It should be real. It should be real, first of all, from we, the cast, and the crew. I mean, the crew, we people, even we that are holding the light, people that are holding the camera, the people, you know, in charge of the technicalities. It should be real to us. Then also, it should be real to the people active, people who are in front of the camera. Because if we just come on set and say, okay, Flora was filled with the Holy Spirit and it started speaking in tongues, let's act it. And if that's the only thing we are acting, and it just act, it's going to be childish. The people will watch it and they'll be like, you say, okay, oh, uh -huh. she's speaking in tongues. Oh, that's cute. But we want more than that. We want, we want a reality of what is going on. And so what we did was that we spent time to just worship God in prayers, worship God in the Spirit, and we're just praying. And we were praying and we were worshiping God in the Spirit. And all of a sudden, everyone on set, everyone felt the anointing. And we just kept on going and going and going. And we couldn't stop. We were just worshipping God in the Spirit. We were filled with the Spirit. We felt the Spirit of God. You know, and after that same, we decided to, you know, now let's act it now. And so when we acted it, it came out with life. 
And so I, I felt blessed and I felt happy that people, you know, can watch that scene. You know, the intention was that let, let people watch this scene, just to see by this scene, let lives be transformed by that scene, let the Holy Spirit be, let people be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm happy, to, I'm, 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 I'm grateful to God and I thank God that that was achieved by the power of God alone. That, that was achieved to the glory of God alone. That wasn't just a show, it was a ministration, it was an impactation. You know, the life of Flora, a lot of people who are going through a mess and God has saved them. Are not just saved but are filled by the spirit of god by just watching that scene you know so that for me was a great testimony and this is beyond and today with pvo for the new characters that were introduced to be honest i didn't know they were going to be introduced i had a direction that I feel Abattoir season three should go. But when I came in the presence of, I came into the presence of God as usual in the secret place, and I was praying to, and I was seeking the face of the Lord on the direction that He actually wants me to go. I discovered that it's completely different from what I had in mind. So what I had in mind was completely different. I had characters that I think I had the direction, I had, I had what I feel should be it. But as I was praying, the Holy Spirit was leading me to a different direction. I was saying in university. I was seeing the mess in the society that is being pictured and being that it's like the university is displaying the mess in society actually. The university is a picture of what goes on in the society. You know, in the university there are realms, there are people with power. We had the registrar who was in the occultic, we had the the occultist, we had all these people that the world outside, they don't know that they know each other, they don't know they are connected. But actually, they are connected, and they are connected to the same source, the same evil power. And we, in that season three, we see that it takes only God's intervention to break this evil influence. It takes um, the righteous standing in the place of prayer to break down this evil influence, this occultism, this, this evil influence, this evil connection. It takes children of God standing in the place of prayer, you know. So I get to realize that some people that we don't even know they are connected to darkness are actually connected to darkness. People we see outside, people we see in the open, some of, some of them are popular, some of them we know, some of them we don't know, some of them are influential, some of them are fighting for the people. Some of them look as if they're actually fighting for the people, but no, they're actually the ones that the devil is using to bring down people. You know, So as God was revealing these secrets to me, I realized that this can only be a revelation. This this is beyond what I can actually think and just write. You know, to be honest with me, I didn't see this. To be, to be honest, I didn't see this coming. I didn't see, um, I didn't see this actually coming. In fact, true story. This is what happened as I was writing about two hours season three. It got to a point when I wrote episode one, and I finished writing episode one. I was about to write episode two, that I got to a point that I was confused. I didn't know what I was writing again. Usually, I have a hand on what I write. I have a, a firm grip of what I write because I have a synopsis. I have a layout of what I write. Before I even start writing the script, I would have gotten the synopsis. I would have gotten everything before I you know, dive into writing the script. But this time around, the Holy Spirit wasn't giving me that access. And I tried to write this episode two. It wasn't coming out. I was like, what is going on? This, I'm not following the synopsis. It wasn't, it wasn't coming out well. I was stranded. Was the first time I felt like as if I had serious writer's block. Then I was as I was praying that the Holy Spirit said to me, He said, The reason why you are like this is because you still think you are thinking you can achieve this with your power, with your experience, with your expertise. If and if you can tell what is going to happen at the end, if you can tell what is going to happen at the end of each scene or at each episode. Then people outside to be able to tell what can happen at the end of each episode. But I want to take you to a level where you cannot even tell what's going to happen next when you're writing. So that it's going to be me giving you that direct revelation. So that you get to a point, people also will not be able to tell where this story is going. Because if you can tell where the story is going as a human being, because you're the writer and flesh and blood, you can tell it. 
That means people out there who are also like you, like human, like you, can also tell where the story is going. But if you as a writer cannot tell where the story is going, and you're just writing, and you're just banking on revelation, and you can't tell where the story is going, that means millions of people cannot even, will never be able to tell where the story is going. And as you could see, I didn't know where the story was going. I was just writing. I was just writing. And God was giving the revelation. And it, myself, I was surprised when some things happened. So I'm part of the audience too. So this person could actually, so the register is connected to this person. So this person, this person's father, I'm the same thing, same thing I said to God. I said, oh, God, oh, wow. Because when I was writing, I was just like, wow. Oh, my God, wow. So this person is connected to this person. This person is connected to this person. So this person, this person's father. It held me by surprise. I was shocked myself, you know. I think that's the level that God, that was another level that God brought me to in Abattoir. The ability to write with revelation and not information. The ability to write based on inspiration based on the anointing you know so that 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 was that was a strange ground for me i know of course i've been praying to god and they have been revealing some things for me in the past but this one was different this one it was the only touch light that i had was god's word was god's word and i was just following by faith and i was telling myself it gets it got to when i was frustrated i said i didn't wait i don't know I, I told my wife i said ella i don't know where this story is going i'm just following but i know at the end of the day god will not give me rubbish I'm just falling by faith and I just give God the glory that people who watch this film and they are blessed. My name is Martins. Martins Sonia. Okay. What is your relationship with him? I don't have any relationship with him. Do you want me to bring you in for questioning? No, please, please. Please, no. Then start explaining the drama you just acted. The guy is my student. I challenged him in the class. I guess he got provoked and... He came to challenge me. Mr. Martins, a lot is going on in this school. I'm here looking for a kidnapped boy. But everyone seems to be hiding something. The registrar and you, the lecturer. What are you all hiding? I am not hiding anything. Is he in a cult? Yes, he is. Are you in a cult? No, I'm not. Then why do you know so much? How come you know so much? Look, it's a long story. Make it short. It all started a long time ago. I discovered my father was a cultist. He killed my mother. He used that for rituals. He also hmm. was... Hold on. Ma? Hold on. I'm not a fan of horror films. This is Beyond Entertainment. Woohoo! Keep, keep, keep watching, watching Beyond Entertainment show with PBO. Woohoo! Well, one of the high points that... Um, okay. Rewind. Now, let's... Backstory of this is Daddy Owojori, Kale Owojori. One of the things he told me was, look, Gami, there is no reason for Sonia to give his life to Jesus. If he gives his life to Jesus and he escapes all these terrible things he has done, I will not forgive you personally. So he said it to me, and we're all laughing about it. Of course, it was a joke. He said, how can Sonia kill this person, kill this person's daughter? And at the end of the day, you tell me that you go to God and say, Sonia, forgive me, Sonia, Jesus, forgive me. And God will just, no, no, no. If that happens, I will not forgive you because he himself hated the character that he was portraying, you know? So there was a scene in Abattoir, if you've watched it, there was a scene in Abattoir where Martins was to forgive his father. And, you know, Sonia had an encounter with him. Sonia brought him to the house and they were talking. And as I was reading that scene, and Sonia was telling Martins, he said, Martins finally got the chance to preach to Sonia. And Sonia said, I... For a long time, I've been trying to get your attention. 
just to tell you that I'm sorry. And I'm so grateful to God that I'm finally able to do that. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. When I read that part, I was shedding tears. Like literally, I felt the Sonia yeah, as a real person. I, I for the first time I I, sh- I was shedding tears. You know, that was I was reading it alone. I was realizing my lines, you know. But it was the lines were just so real to me. Then I now came outside and I was realizing the lines with Daddy Kyle Dewo Jury and we were realizing that line. I got to that point and he suddenly stopped and said, Well, this is too much. People are not ready for what is coming. He said, People are not ready for I can people cope with this? I mean, because suddenly he had so much pity for Sonia. Now it's not like Sonia is a real person. And I think he's a real person. We don't see this person, but it's real. It's real out there. There's someone called Sonia out there that we don't see. This person hasn't he didn't have the chance. He has this person hasn't gotten the chance to hear the gospel. And so this person, the only hope he has is in darkness, is in shedding blood, is in doing evil. This person is real. We don't know this person. But God is bringing this person out in a scripted form. We've not met this person before. We don't even know who this person is. But he's real out there. And so once I was crying, he was shedding tears that I wish Martin she could tell me this earlier. I've been looking for her attention. All I want to tell you is I'm sorry. So all the while I did, all the entering the dark realm, all the this, all the this, is just to get her attention and to tell you that I'm sorry. Now that I have tell you, I've told you I'm sorry, I'm happy. I'm at peace. And that alone made we 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 felt that so much that this is deep. We couldn't continue just acting like that. We had to first take time to pray on that sin. The sin that Martin has finally preached to Soya. We prayed on that sin. We prayed. That was like the last day of shoot. We were we prayed on that sin as cast and crew. And finally we got to the site and we acted that part. Even while acting. I felt this this Sonia is not just a fictional character, it's a real person out there that God wants to arrest. You know, so well, whoever is out there, the, um I just felt in my spirit to just say whoever is out there and hasn't encountered Jesus, you know about Jesus. Because I said it, said it, Jesus I know is a righteous Jesus. He's a righteous man, he's a righteous person. But how can a righteous person see a wretched person like me? You know. So if you're out there, you feel so wretched, so dirty, so smelling, so evil. So you yourself can't forgive you. Jesus Christ is out there stretching forth his hands and is ready and is willing to forgive you. If only you will accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're out there, just know that Jesus Christ is waiting for you. He's, he wants to save you from sin. He wants to save you from darkness. He wants to save you from the pit. He wants to deliver you from hell. So he knew that he was heading to hell. He knew that his deadline has come. He knew that there are people that are going to kill him. Him every night. Who? Oh. Death! I smell his presence every day, Martins. He is here for me. He is here in this room. Ha! Ah. You are drowning in darkness. Then bring me into your light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In him was light, and the light was the life of all mankind. Martins, were you reciting a creed? No, no. I, I, I am introducing the light. Who's the light? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Jesus that I know, he is a man without sin. Uh, yet, he shed his blood for you and I. 
He was wounded for our offenses. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. Mm. I have served the devil, covenanted with the devil, shed blood for the devil. And now, hear yourself. You're telling me that this Jesus shed his blood for me. How is that possible? It is possible because he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I killed your mother. I shed her blood on the altar of sacrifice. So how can a man so be loving man so furious? That's it. If I a human being can forgive you. Jesus is more willing to forgive you. But there was another spirit speaking through him, telling him that there is no way a righteous Jesus can save a wretched man like him. I want to tell you that that spirit is of the devil. He wants to drag you to hellfire. But just like Jesus, but just like Sonia, at the end of the movie, he still cried out to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus Christ can still save you if only you cry out to him and tell him to restore you. Can we just take this minute for us to just pray? If you don't mind, Daddy PVO, we just pray. Can you just close your eyes and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Just keep calling the name of Jesus. Just keep calling the name of Jesus. Just keep calling the name of Jesus. Sonia on his sick bed, he was shouting, Jesus, Jesus. On his sick bed, he was still shouting, Jesus. Jesus, he had stroke on his sick bed. He, his left, his, the left side of his face was paralyzed, paralyzed. He couldn't move. But in that pain, he was still shouting, Jesus, Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me. That is the voice that Jesus is looking for. The voice that will cry out to him and say, Jesus, save me. If you are so deep in sin, you are a cultist. You have killed people. You have used people for sacrifice. You yourself, you know that God cannot save you. Yourself, you know that there is the only place that is for you, that is left for you, is in hell. Satan has already told you, you know that hell is waiting for you and you are ready to go there to spend eternity in hell. But you don't have to go there. Jesus Christ is stretching forth his hands to deliver you from hell, to save you from hell, to save you from sin. Only if you will cry out to him and say, save me, Jesus, deliver me. There is no sinner who does not cry to Jesus that Jesus will not stretch forth his hands and save. So cry out to Jesus now and say, Jesus, save me. I know I have killed people. I know I have done evil. I know I have sacrificed people. Innocent people have gone to hell because of me. But I want you to save me. Deliver me from sin. Set me free. I am tired of living a wretched life. I am tired of living a painful life, a life that causes havoc and pain to people. I want you to save me. Go ahead and tell Jesus that Jesus Christ deliver me. I want you as my Lord and Savior. I want a relationship with you. I want to walk with you to the end of my days. Father Lord, I pray for this person out there who is in sin, who has been trapped to believe that he can never get out from sin. He can never escape hell. Whoever that person is, Lord God, I pray. The Bible says light shines in darkness and darkness comprehends it not. Darkness cannot understand light. Father, let your light shine to whoever that person is. In the secret place, wherever that person is, in the, the person can be alone in the room. The person can be wherever that person is. Let your light shine forth to that person and pull that person out from sin and pull that person out from hell in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, oh, God, you will not be an animal slaughtered in the abattoir in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be an animal, you will not be like an animal to the devil slaughtered in the mighty name of Jesus. God will save you. 
God will deliver you. The Bible says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? But thus said the Lord, Even the captive of the mighty shall be delivered, and the prey shall be taken away. For whoever it is out there that is under the prayer and the captive of the enemy, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will deliver you and set you free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We say thank you. We worship your holy name. We bless you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Father, for saving these people from sin. Thank you for delivering them from sin and immorality. We worship you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. of the registrar as usual it's the holy spirit it's the holy spirit it's the holy spirit and I saw, there was someone else on my mind all of a sudden from nowhere he just jumped boom and why not cast him as the registrar instead so that voice can only be the voice of the holy spirit as i said earlier and so that was when I, i've never seen the movie before but i've seen him on the stage production before that was a long time ago and so i wasn't even sure whether he was going to do it well. But the only thing that I knew that I was holding on to was not something practical. It was just the voice that I heard. The voice of the Holy Spirit. That was the only thing that I was holding on to when I did the casting. You know. You know, so as I said earlier, it's still the Holy Spirit. It's still the Holy Spirit. It's still the Holy Spirit all the way. You know, but for the place of the life of the registrar and the life of Sonia. And how Sonia, mercy was following Sonia. The place of mercy, you cannot understand the place of mercy. You cannot understand the move of mercy. You, you can't say this person should be forgiven because he's a sim he has done more havoc than this person and this person should not be forgiven because he has done so much evil you can't because even god said it himself said i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy on so before the registrar he hasn't done he didn't do as much evil as the the difference see the similarity between the registrar and sonia is that they were both in the dark world they were both in the dark world. They, they did evil things together. But the difference is that Sonia had, ex he had seen it all. He has seen, he has experienced it all. He has, it's like somebody he has gotten the whole world. The only thing that remains now is to lose his soul. The Bible says, What shall I put the man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So he has gained the whole world. The only thing that remains is to lose his soul. And that was where God just caught him. Mercy just caught him. Mercy caught him. But for the registrar, he hasn't gained the old world. He's looking forward to gaining the old world. And that was when he lost it. That was when he died. You know? So that is why it's important that you are alive and you can hear the message of the gospel preached to you. That is the place of mercy. That is the place of mercy. That you are alive, that you are living, and you are standing, and you can hear the message of Christ preached to you. And you, so far you can hear it. That's the place of mercy. Because no, look, look at it. Sonia, all through his life, didn't hear the message of Christ. He didn't have the opportunity to, have to hear the message of Christ. But the day he heard the message of Christ was the day that, you know, at, on the sick bed, he decided to, you know, you know, run to Jesus. That was the day he decided to run to Jesus. And that was the day mercy spoke for him. So the lesson there for me is that you never know when the tomorrow will be. You know, for those who are chasing power, you know, you want to gain the whole world by all means. You want to gain everything. You want to gain the whole world. You want to gain it. You want this money. You want this fame. You want this power. But you don't know when your tomorrow will be the last tomorrow. You don't know when your today will be your last day. You don't know whether today will be the last day you will live. You can't. You can't tell. You can't tell what tomorrow will, what tomorrow holds. You, you, you can't tell. You know. That is why it is very very important that when you hear the message of Jesus Christ. When you, hear the message of, when, when you hear the message being preached to you, you run to it. You run to the message. You run to Jesus immediately. As Jesus offers you salvation, you run to it. Because the devil knows 
that once you are saved, you are off his radar, you are off his grip, and he will do anything to cut you short. Maybe in real, in, in, in real sense, probably the registrar, the devil knows, the devil had an insight that, oh, this registrar, give this registrar one more week, this registrar will turn over to Jesus. Or if the registrar was arrested, he will meet Jesus in the prison. And so the devil knew that, okay, the only thing I would do is to waste this register now before this register got to prison. Don't think of it because it was the moment the police arrived. The moment the police arrived, a sec few seconds before then, that was when they shot the registrar. That was when they killed the registrar. So what if the devil was thinking that, look, if this registrar is arrested and imprisoned, he will meet Jesus in the prison. Before he meets Jesus, let me waste him. You know, so you never know when tomorrow will be. And so, if you are hearing the message of the cross, that shows that God is extending his hand of mercy towards you. And the most important thing to do at that point in time is to run to Jesus. We are one big family. One blood. One soul. One heart. Stands for all. Speaks for all. My battle is not with your Narewaju. Leave. The stars bind us together. The stars make us who we are. This is not the place and time to recite the creed. No blood! Alarewaju, no glory! Commando! No blood! No glory! Commando! No blood! No glory! Commando! Next time I give you an order. Do not waste my time, you fool. I didn't know what to do, Baba. If you do not want to end up like Rambo, better start knowing what to do. I myself, I was surprised to find out that the father of the cultist was the registrar. So it was a shock to me. So, you know, it should, so it made me realize when God was telling me that just keep writing. If people can predict the end, if you can predict the end, then people will be able to predict the end. But if you cannot predict it, then no one will predict it. Just keep writing by faith. So it wasn't making sense to me. Initially, everything wasn't making sense. The beginning wasn't making sense. Until the end of the film, I realized this. The, and I looked at the total picture, I realized that, wow, this can only be God. Silenced. So what else do you want me to do? Look, Rambo, if you don't do something about this thing, it can bounce back on me. And if it bounces back on me, you can be sure that you will also eat a piece of the cake. <laughs> cake. That is the last thing on my mind now. And more so, I am watching my weight. Are you mad? Do you think I'm joking here? You offered me cake, and I said no. So who is the joker? Rambo, stop playing with fire. Quench it! Registra, we are all trapped in this fire. And there is no going out. <sighs> what do you mean? I just got the news that mom is dead. Did you hear that? I am not your dad. Don't dare deny me. Don't you dare deny me, dad. Mom is dead. I didn't know about this. So now you know. Your sacrifice is complete. And you must be a happy man now. I, I, I don't know what you are talking about. Registrar. We can play hide and seek together, you know. I have all the time. You have paid your sacrifice. Hmm? And you must think you will be a happy man. Your dream of climbing the upper chamber has finally come to pass. Hmm? Well, guess what? You would have used to me for the sacrifice instead of my mom. Because I swear, I 
I swear I will use every power in my possession to stop you from reaching your goals. One of the characters that I one of the characters I loved or I love so much is the character of Kyle D and the energy the energy that he had to preach the gospel. You know, when he received Jesus Christ, he received it with so much passion and he went all out. Because he, to him it was like he's dead already. He's already to him is is a perfect um show of somebody who is actually dead in Christ. He and was completely dead. You know, he, nothing could frighten him again. The wages of sin is dead. Yes. And the gift of God is eternal life. Yes. I'm talking to sinners. If you are still living in sin, death is knocking at your door. See, repent and give your life to Jesus. John the Baptist said, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Make straight path with him. Let me tell you, Jesus has come to visit this campus. No room for darkness. You know, so he carried the message of the gospel to the end of his life, you know. Even though he didn't die, you know, but he just kept preaching. And even in the face of danger, it was sold out. It was a challenge to me as a person. And I asked myself this question, how sold out I am for the gospel, for the cause of the gospel, you know? Can I preach the gospel in the face of danger, you know? When I see people pointing a gun at me, can I stand and still preach the gospel? That's the question we should, how? You know, it's easy to say, I'm sold out, you know, I'm preach, I'm sold out, I'm a sold out child of God, but not until, not until we face the test, not until we face the test. That's why it's very important for us to completely you know, like daily, come to a point where we are dead to flesh, dead to ourselves. You know, daily was ready to carry his cross and follow God to the end. That was a great lesson for me. Lord Jesus Christ, please have mercy on me. Please save me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord, please, please help me. The devil really wanted to pull her down. He said I wanted to pull her down. I wanted to come down. I knew that Sarah was was approaching the lights gradually. So he plotted different things around Sarah. He used Frank. He used that day. He used all these things just to pull her down. This is beyond entertainment. Keep, Keep watching, watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PBO! Woohoo! Who is the person in question? He's my son. Your son? Uh, well, officer, not biological son like that. He's just like a guardian because. It's... Mr. Debola, your story is unnecessary. She gets the idea. My story is not necessary. It is unnecessary. He is my son. I just wanted to make sure that... Uh, there is no confusion here, actually. There is no confusion anywhere. Stop emphasizing on unnecessary details. He is my son. Okay. I get it. He is your son. Yes. Can I see his picture? That's him. Wait a minute. What is it? You are Mr. Martin's father. You know Martin's? Yes, I do. And... What is it? <sighs> Sir, you will be spending some time with me here in the station. <sighs> what for? You have questions to answer. What kind of question? Did you pay the registrar a visit some days ago? I did. 
you are clearly the one. Ah. What is going on? I mean, what is what is happening? You are Mr. Martin's father. Yes, I'm Martin's father. Then you would have to explain to Ross why you killed your wife and used her blood for rituals. You have questions to answer, Chief Duro Sonya. He's not my son. Baba Gero. We are, he's not my biological son. He's my spiritual son. We are not related by blood. We are related only by the blood of Jesus. He's not my son. Baba Gero, save the details. I think she gets the idea. Thanks for the clarification. You would have spent the nights in prison. <sighs> I have Baba Gwenro. For the records, you were too quick to disown him. <coughs> Please, don't let him know. Well, you can be sure that your secret is safe with me. For the records, I have no secret with you. Nevertheless, thank you. Interesting chemistry between Baba Gwenro and um, the Mr. Adigbala, Barista Adigbala. They have a very interesting chemistry. You know, both pursuing the same thing but in different ways. Mr. Adibola is, is anxious. He's like he wants his son to be to be he wants to his son to be free. He really, he really wants his son to be rescued. And he wants practical approach to how his son can be rescued. But Adibola, on the other hand, is looking at the spiritual approach of how the son can be rescued. And Mr. Adibola, being the lawyer that he is. Is having conflict with Barak Benro's spiritual approach, and that is where they always have this conflict. Mr. Ibola is a Christian, you know, solid child of God. He just got, he just gives life to Jesus anyway, but he's a Christian. He believes in Jesus, but sometimes the issues that he's passing through are so much clouded his reason for believing in the spiritual approach that Barak Benro is presenting, and that's how the consistently have this conflict and it's that's life for us you know sometimes when we see trouble when we see problems we tend to believe more in the physical approach we tend to believe more in how we can practically see the solution to this problem that when a spiritual solution is given or when the word is given we undermine the world we look down on the world we don't want to even believe the word to us at that point in time, it doesn't really make sense. What we want to see is how can we get this solution? How can we get the solution to this problem? And so that's what we are looking for. The solution, the solution, the solution. And God is telling us that, look, lo, I'm with you to the end. Or it is well with your soul. I've, I've given you this. And God is giving us word from his, you know, from giving us the word that he is with us. But we don't, because it's spiritual, we don't want to believe it. You know, so that's the conflict between... Bagwero and Baba Agwero and Mr. Adebola. But thank God they finally came to good terms. Baba Agwero, can I ask you a question? Please feel free. What is more important to you? My missing son? or Martin's imprisonment. What kind of question is that, Mr. Adibola? I just need to find out. <laughs> find out what? Whether I'm in the right place or not. <sighs> Mr. Adibola, are you thinking I don't care about your missing son? You cut me off. I don't understand. At the registrar's office, Baba Gbero, you cut me off. We are at the registrar's office to discuss the imprisonment of Martins, not your missing son. That is still not a reason to cut me off. I didn't cut you off. Don't lie to me. Don't call me a liar, Mr. Dibola. I came all the way here. The only help you could offer is to preach to me. You did not even rise up from your seat, talk less of leaving your house. But for Martins, you were out there patronizing the registrar's office for his release. How does that justify the love that you say you have for my son? You should be hungry, Mr. Tebola. No one is perfect. No one has a 
perfect, 100% perfect nature because we are human, we are flesh, we are blood, you know, so from time to time we will fail, from time to time we will falter. But what keeps us going is the grace of God and the ability to hold on to Jesus Christ anytime we fall. There was a case of a disciple in the Bible that, you know, Jesus told to walk on the water and he was walking on the water. He kept walking. But when he looked back, he started to, you know, he was, he was drowning until Jesus reached out his hand and dragged him up. It just shows that at any point in time, any of us can look back. Anything can make someone look back. When the storm is heavy, we can look back and we can be drowned. Anybody can drown at any given time. But the most important thing is to stretch forth your hand so that Jesus Christ can grab that hand and pull you out. But you know, I, at the point we realized, okay, this man is a perfect man. He's a very wonderful man, but he's still human. And so sometimes he overlikes Martins. Sometimes he, <laughs> he acts as if he doesn't even know Martins. Just shows the human side of him, you know. So uh, he's still human, actually. This is awesome wonderful testimony wonderful story that you have there may god continue to bless our drama ministers may god continue to bless our gospel movie makers in the name of jesus please make sure that you keep upholding them in your prayers all the time because they do a lot they go through a lot to serve us this meal that is called gospel movies always please keep them in your prayers Thank you very much. Until I come your way again with another guest, another episode is Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. Please, na bega de bego, make una subscribe to this YouTube channel now. Eh? Victor Luko Ju PVO is the name of the YouTube channel. Biko, I beg you, subscribe. It's, it won't cost you anything. Na bega de beg. And don't forget to click on that notification button so that whenever a new movie or a new show is dropping you'll be the first to know thank you very much and see you next time modern entertainment beyond the applause of men we seek for something valuable and that is the soul of man yeah. And that is the soul of man Man and we man So that for God And this is beyond and today Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO.